Ramsey's another pothead. Hey, how Just are you? Start cameraman Neil. All right, nice so to meet you, Chris. Getting this for posterity. All right. You know. <laughs> And I just started this song so you guys can uh, go ahead on there. Oh, cool. And right, keep going straight down. I'll see you in the window on your left. It's, it's, it's more. Oh, yeah, it's cool. cooking. Cooking pretty, yeah, it's just like on the radio. Cooking pretty. This is it right here? Yeah. Okay. Thirty-three. Good morning to you. You're home with Rock and Roll, 101.5 WPDH, and we're looking for a high today in the 40s. We will be in the 40s, mid-40s today. Yep, it'll be uh, cloudy this morning, then we'll see some more sunshine this afternoon. A little snow in the forecast for tomorrow morning, just some showers as you're heading out right now. 38, and that's coming from the Mid-Hudson Subaru Weather Center. And joining us in the studio, we have Mike Circlin and Ramsey... Ramsey Moore. Ramsey Moore, I'm sorry, guys. Good morning. And they Good are guys. the uh, the real potheads of comedy. And this is like so many different, uh, the real kings of comedy and the redneck comedy tour. Everybody feels the need to brand themselves now. And you've decided to go after an audience that's very, uh, very comedy friendly. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> they, well, love they love yeah. to laugh. They love to laugh. They love to laugh, and we, we are we are true potheads. We don't you know, make that stuff. Oh, up. this is not a poser thing? No, no, no. no, no. We, we, we <laughs> work out to be in the parking lot at the end of the show. Yeah. All right, good to know. We did a little wake and bake up here, but we did bring gifts. We did come bearing gifts. We're not just, you know, just going to show up here empty-handed. We have the official pothead tank top for ladies. We got one for cricket Oh, here. look at that. Look at that. Ladies you can wear that to the top. gym and the, and the, the church. The real potheads are actually here. It's 6.34. I know. The morning. They're on time. Yeah. They're supposed to be here at 6.30. The phone rang at 6.30. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, I'm not where, quite where, sure I can trust you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you have any children's sizes for my son? We got we have, to we have a, <laughs> oh, no. We have a 3X for uh, we have three X for the coop right here. Thank you, my brother. It's for you. And since, you know, you could either give this to that dude, Chris, to let us in, but we figured we could give you an extra t-shirt that you want to give out, you know, one of those call-ins, maybe like call it 420 or something. <laughs> <laughs> but here, this is for the studio. That's for you guys. Thank right. you. Chris gets a shirt then, too. All right, yeah. Sure, Sweet. Sure. Yeah, he was the here. guy who looks like Serpico. Yeah, yeah he does. The guy looks like every other, every other covered <laughs> copy I've seen in a movie. We'll put, give him one of the shirts. This will be good for his... Uh, for his uh, cover, you know. Yeah, yeah, it won't, oh, yeah. Look, it won't look out of place on him. No, no, no. 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 Yeah, my dad wears one. It's kind of quite ironic. I know yeah, your dad. My wears dad one wears too, one yeah. too, and it's really <laughs> ironic. Yeah. Now, your parents didn't have a problem with issue like when you came out as being like the real potheads of comedy. It wasn't like, oh my God, what did we do? Yeah. Well, I, you know, they we failed as parents. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, I start. You know, I struggled. You know, I've been doing comedy now for 12 plus years, and for, you know, nine of those, I, did, I wasn't a pothead or anything, you know, I didn't come out and say, all right, then we're going to do this pothead show. They're very supportive. I think at this point, they're like, okay, whatever, you know, whatever it takes, if you want to, you know, they're Jewish. I, I, I think, think it, coming out of the closet as a comedian <laughs> is a lot easier than coming out as a pothead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, my parents, I, you know, my parents. Now, now, had, well, did, had you ever had a successful job or anything like that? Were yeah, you? I actually was a full-time uh, high school teacher in, in, in the Bronx and your show. I, I gave up a tenured job to uh, pursue my dreams out in California. So, you know, I, so, you, so what would you do to do that after, like, what, especially, dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it anymore. Uh, no, I just, you know, it is, you know, I was living the American dream, but, you know, it wasn't my dream. I was, like, getting up every morning and, like, you know, I had a great salary, owned my own apartment, you know, and I was just like, you know, and I was doing the comedy at night. A lot of chicks. A lot, uh, yeah, a lot of chicks. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the chicks like a teacher, right? Is that correct? Is that true? That, sure. I think yeah, they like yeah. a stable, it's like, yeah. he's a stable dude, he works with children, right. you know, he's like. And if he, and if he messes with me too bad, I can report him and cost him his life. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, uh, yeah, no, I just, I just, and I was doing the comedy at night, I was working in New York City, and I was doing the comedy at night, and I just, you know, a good friend of mine, Adam Hunter, he's like, hey, you gotta come out to Cal, you gotta come out to California, come do it out here, and I, you know, I, gave, I quit my job, and I said, hey, let's, you know, this is six years ago, I met Ramsey about five years ago, we started doing this web series, The Real Potheads, of realpotheads.com, and then it, it morphed into this, where we, because the three, you know, four of us are, are comics, so we morphed into this comedy tour that we've been doing. We've been doing it all down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. When we do it in California, actually, like the we did our 420 show. We gave out 30 plus, you know, pot brownies to the audience, and we could do that because we, you know people have medical. 420 marijuana. is the Easter for potheads. Yeah. Now, did you have to? Now, did you have to check everybody's medical marijuana? I, I, did yes, I did a verbal. I did a verbal. Yeah, we did a, did a verbal, verbal check. Verbal, verbal, yeah. Is yeah. it pretty? Now, because you know that to me is 
Like I know these are states just legalized in California, I mean, not in California, Colorado and Washington. Yeah, right? Washington State, yeah. And they, rec- and they they actually came out for recreational use. Mm-hmm. Now, the medical marijuana thing in California is such a sham. Like I really you know, when you see, like, I see the ads. Look, I get nervous in crowds, so I need to have marijuana. Yeah, but that's that's exactly it. It's just a sham. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like this whole notion. My wife went to California. My, my daughter goes to Occidental. Oh, okay, nice, yeah. nice. And um, my wife uh, my wife was out there. She's taking her to college. And she was, she was at Venice Beach. And there are these guys in sweats with, like, uh, with like um, lanyards around their necks. And skateboards, and giant log boards. Mm-hmm. And they're just rolling up, going, Do you script? Do you script? Yeah. And they're writing people scripts for medical marijuana yeah. on the side of the road. You know, they, they give you a rundown. There's like like posters in the uh, in the waiting rooms. Do you have this? Is the, are these your symptoms? Well, then you might need marijuana. Yeah. You know, but it's, there's no, like if you went in looking for Vicodin the same way, or if you went in looking for Percocets, or. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the big difference, Coop, and you, anybody who smokes pot would know that. You know, it's ridiculous. The marijuana is illegal anyway. I can't, you know, it's one of the most safest drugs there has to be, uh, you know, uh, recreational drugs. If you're going to do a recreational drug, I'm not saying go out, you know, don't be responsible. You know, you could abuse anything. Uh, but in Cal, yeah, but California, they say uh, wine is an $11 billion a year industry. I mean, $9 billion a year industry, where weed is an $11 billion a year industry, you know, in California. Yeah. So. California is known as wine country. Yep. Good wine out there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ramsey just keeps... Ramsey, I swear to God, you look like grandmother. Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> you ever look at like an old woman before. look? You ever get the... Uh... Oh, I get the old woman look, and, you know, I was going to... Do you want a little piece of pie? We got some left over here. <laughs> you know, bring some... Ramsey's kind of... Ramsey's kind of got that, what's that? It's Pat. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah very... Yeah. I use that as because I sort of lure people in. They're like, oh, am I hooking up with this cool dude or maybe this cool chick? And, you know, it's like, he like, seems to like softball either way. <laughs> we met, well, one of the fir- well, after we met, the first thing we did was uh, we did a Susan Boyle yeah. parody. Oh, he right? got me in drag early on. Yeah, it was, it was called You've Been Boiled, where, you know, you, we did a prank show where Susan Boyle is pranking you. Where, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right? <laughs> And uh, we, we, that's what was the first thing we did together. So, well, yeah. the, because we're potheads, so of course the first thing that really cracked him up is me doing the Susan Boyle goes, Oh, it's so lovely to be here! <laughs> <laughs> For some reason that still kills him. It gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now are you guys doing anything locally? Are you doing anything in the region? Uh, well, uh, tomorrow I'm going to be, uh, tu- t- uh, Tuesday night I'm going to be back at the Greenwich Village Comedy Club, and then we, you're actually going to Texas, right? I'm going to Texas tomorrow. I'll be in Houston at um, went to the Capital Cities Comedy Club on Friday. Okay. So yeah, nothing. nothing. So, guys, so it's not exclusively y'all tour together. Well, I mean, we 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 tour together and we tour separate. It's like when we can set up shows. You know, we have two or three of us, then we do that, which are preferably. But yeah. then we do like co-headlining things too. Now it's funny because a lot of times. Like you guys, you guys will do. You said you do shows together. Yeah. Because a lot of times a guy will be like, "All right, I do this kind of comedy. I don't want anybody else doing that yeah. stuff on this show." But you're bringing four, you know, bringing three guys doing the same genre. Yeah, yeah, ba- yeah, basically. But different you, takes. Yeah, everybody has a different take. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, my, you know. Right. Well, we have different takes because, like, uh, B. Swine, who's one of the potheads, he deals with marijuana and women issues. Yeah. I deal with marijuana and food issues, and Mike deals with marijuana and paranoia. And paranoia, and you know. Being a, you know, being an ex-teacher and how I, you know, I, I should have been some kind of role model. Where, you know, I used to you work... You are a role model. I, yeah, I am a role model. You know, Coop, I used to work at a school and the principal asked me to be the head of Varsity Athletes Against Substance Abuse. And uh, my club motto was, say no to drugs, kids, so there's more for Mr. Circle. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I was going to clean up the streets. I was going to take drugs off the streets one gram at a time. <laughs> and so that wasn't, that wasn't yeah. really... Uh, you didn't follow through on that? I, I was trying. I'm still working on I it. I figured you would have taken the stipend at least. <laughs> Freddie, what's up? Uh, yeah, we we got we, we have a lot of people yeah. that, that, that that don't smoke pot at all. Like we have a, a pretty hard whiskey drinking crowd that likes it. I think people just like anytime someone sort of acts the fool or kind of you know tomfoolery. And everybody, whether they got a five year old that makes them tired, has. A, Hothead moments. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, you argue with that. when we say pothead, it's more of like we're like, all right, this is you know you, everything you see on TV is geared towards you know a certain audience, mm -hmm. and everything you see in the movies is geared towards certain audience. So we want to get back to the time where it's like, all right, we're, we, this is stuff that we think is really cool. This is stuff that's gonna that makes us laugh. So we figure it's gonna make you know guys. Even if they smoke pot and ladies, if they don't smoke pot, they're gonna make they're gonna laugh too because you know. And part of the pothead creed is we uh, insp we inspire and try to promote people to be individuals and to think for themselves. And if they need a, a certain chemical or a leafy substance to help with that, all the better. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Right. 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 That, that's kind of that's that's kind of a strange thing though when you know, when you're cooking brownies for the audience. <laughs> but that to me is that to me is a. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I think it's a, a real altruistic uh, endeavor too. It's true that, yeah. you know, it was, you know, they were it was yeah, like, altruism. That's altruism. Exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they were gone. They were gone. I'll tell you, they were gone in. I think before even the show. Yeah, the started, show. Was, well, were, yeah, I would hope. Gone. I would hope they, you would do. You would have done that. Yeah, they were. Be there half an hour early for pre. Yeah, it was. No, and, they, <laughs> and we gave out all thirty. And, it's, and it you could never come early enough to yeah. our shows. <laughs> You can't, and uh, and the thing is, also in California, it's just I could, it's you know I can afford it. I can't afford you know to do, to, you know the the weed prices are outrageous here in New York. I don't know. Now, what does weed go for in California? Um, and well, let's say a good a good ounce. I would say I would pay about buck fifty for an ounce. A good ounce. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys pay about four hundred here? That's what I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word of the street. All right, if we could have somebody call in and confirm <laughs> that they're paying in Poughkeepsie. All right, 644. We're going to be back in just a couple of moments. We got Mike Sir Circlet and uh, Ramsey Moore. Ramsey Moore. I'm going to mess it up. Not it's all right. You want to call you Dusty Rhodes. I don't know. You can call me Dusty Rhodes. I'm a, I'll be at the Omni. <laughs> all right, we're back in a moment. Hang around. Point five WPDH. You know, the rock and roll. 101.5 WPDH. Absolutely one of my favorite Christmas songs right there. And over 40 years old. Oh, yeah. Well over yeah. 40 years yeah. old. War is over with uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono. And we were all just kind of sitting there going, yeah, that's the best one. Yeah, that's Great song. That's yeah. it. That's it. I, and I, I got to tell you, I feel for all of our brothers and sisters working in retail right now. Because oh. <laughs> the Christmas music has gone 24 hours. Oh, sure. In the malls and everything like that. A lot of places were already that way. We were at Michael's Crafts and Things. I think it was two weeks ago and the Christmas music was already yeah. going. Some yeah, of that. So I think in November they start, right after Halloween. They're like, all right, Christmas time. And it's like, and every store has like one 90-minute CD that repeats. Well, that would, <laughs> I, you know, I'll tell you, that would happen when I went to the Spring House. Mm -hmm. Some restaurant? Restaurant, restaurant yeah. up in Rochester. And their, their Christmas music repeated, so I knew the next song every right. single time. Here comes yeah, there wasn't even happy shuffle. Day for you. No, there was no <laughs> shuffle to it whatsoever. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, and here we go, this is going to be The Waitresses. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, the whole thing, so. Anyway, we got Mike Zirklin and uh, Ramsey Moore. They're our guests, the real potheads of comedy, and working their way up the, now are you doing gigs on up the East Coast, or? Yeah, yeah well, we're doing, as, yeah, but I've been in the city, I've been doing a bunch of gigs, I've been in, I was in New York Comedy Club on, on uh, Saturday night, uh, Greenwich Village Comedy Club a couple of times, I'm doing the Grizzly Pair, actually, tonight. Now that I remember, yeah, Grizzly Pear, it's also in the village tonight, 11 o'clock. You guys hear this? That's amazing. a hot show. That's Grizzly a good Pear. show, yeah. It's, it's it's great to be in the, you know, and we do it, you know, we do it as Mike Sirkland, you know, we do the same, you know, pretty much my same act. And, you know, we talk about big pot and legalization and being an ex former teacher and all that. And what did you do? Wait, okay, you were, you were a high school teacher? High school math teacher. High school math. Did you just pick up and leave in the middle of the year? No, or? I wouldn't do something like that. No, okay. it was. I, I, He's I, very responsible. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 he took I off his so. clothes and burned them <laughs> in the middle of the room. I pulled out Jerry Maguire and who else is with me? And a 15 yeah. like yeah. year old girl came and, yeah. and <laughs> said, No, 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 you have to stay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, it was I was, well it was well planned. It was a two year, it was a two year plan. Line. Yeah, yeah, no, and I loved, you know, I worked for a great <laughs> boss. I was telling him, you know, it's like one of those, I walked away from like one of those jobs like everybody dreams about. Like I used to go to like Jet Games with my boss and like, he, you know, he came to show. The, the principal you're talking the about? The principal, yeah, okay. he was really cool. And no, I, no, <laughs> when you were doing the Mr. Circling, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the math teacher yeah. doing comedy. Were you doing pot stuff? Yeah, I was doing pot stuff. It was funny that you mentioned that because he came, he comes to the show, and then he comes to the show one night, and then the next, you know, you do your jokes, you don't really think about them. Yeah. And I wasn't doing it. And if you hear my act or hear Rams act, it's not, you know, it, you know, maybe my act is like 70, 70, 30, 70, you know, 70% not pot jokes and 30% pot jokes. But, you know, he hears a couple of these jokes, and then, and then the next day just happens to be payday. You know, I go in and pick up my paycheck. He goes, 
Well, I know what you spend your money on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got some yeah. cause. <laughs> Let's see, we need a budget cut. I'll put a little note yeah. next to your name here. So, but Just I, for cause, yes. Yeah, but I'm not, you know, I mean, listen, I've worked with a lot of teachers. But, and you know, I, I think when it comes to the budget cuts and the teachers, if they said, would you pay an extra nickel so the teachers could buy some weed every Friday? <laughs> you know, I might say People yes to that. People are in for that. But yeah, we, I, listen, I've you know, you smoke pot with a lot of teachers. I'm not naming any names. Because those kids but, take a lot of patience. Yeah. They take a lot of... Well, I knew, I, I, every special ed teacher I knew was a pothead. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying all of you are, but I'm saying that growing up, I knew my, a my bunch mom, of... My mom was your not. Your mom was not? <laughs> yeah. She was not. Well, your mom was a former nun, though, so yeah, yeah. she had her nun. other things going. Yeah. Her mom was a nun. Oh, wow. And left, the nun, left being a nun. Oh, really? Well, how lucky is yeah. it that yeah, her mom well, did, because otherwise she wouldn't be That's here. That's right. You, know. you see that? Yeah, you guys said Jesus was almost your father. That's right. uh, almost. <laughs> He's my more stepdad. Of my, more stepdad. Of a yeah. Yeah. Mom's first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Because <laughs> well, they wear because they wear a wedding ring. Yeah, yeah, they, right. That's, nuns, mean, nuns wear a wedding did ring. Did they? Yeah. They did in yeah. the name of the rose. No, they still do in this. Yeah. Well, at least I don't know. At least post Vatican II, and Vatican II up till then they did. Because I know the sister Rita. That was the only way she was ever getting a wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> Some people choose to choose well, a wedding celibacy. celibacy. She could uh, get someone a green card. That'd be the second. Yeah, thing. well, yeah. Yeah, she's, she was the teacher who escaped the Germany Germans from Holland. Oh, okay. Wow. And wow. she was uh, she was she was this giant. You know, I think what, what's Holland best known for? What are those little? Those bulbs. Those no, those little shoes. Those, nesting dolls. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> With little the dance. What are they called? The what? The little dams. Real dams. Yeah, the dikes. dikes. Oh, okay. That's yeah. That's <laughs> it. All right. Six fifty six. You know, over rock and roll. One hundred one point five WPDH. Deborah the medium. She's gonna be joining us after seven. Yep. She sees dead people. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So yes, and it's yes. really cool because she actually claims that she sees them around you, Ooh, and she talks cool. to them and asks some questions and stuff. Oh like my that. goodness. Yeah, I won't let her talk to any of my dead people. Yeah. No. I don't want to hear the dissatisfaction. <laughs> I don't want the disappointment from the baby. <laughs> if there are dead people around you, you just want them to kind of sit back and chill. You don't want to wake them up. Or yeah. Nah, no. Nah, I'm more of a. I'm more of a. Hey, how you guys doing? All right, good to see you. Tell oh. everybody I said hey. We're back in a moment. Hang around. Studio. Over rock and roll. One hundred one point five WPDH Journey. Wheel in the sky. A little later on this morning. We have tickets for this Saturday night's John Waters Christmas special. Oh, yeah. He's going to be at the Barnavon. And looking forward to that, taking my wife for our anniversary. Nice. And that's uh, that's like kind of like a, what? He's telling stories? It's a spoken word, the whole thing. Oh, and wow. he's going to be talking about all his uh, his Christmas memories, his favorite parts of Christmas. And he everything. loves, he's a Christmas He really guy. does yeah, love yeah. Christmas. Yeah. He's quite festive. Yeah. Yes. I, you know, this is one of, the, one of the things that really sucks. I taped an interview with the guy last week. Right. Well, two weeks ago, actually. And the guy was, it was like one of the best interviews in my radio life. <laughs> well, that's how and, that's how and everything crashed. Uh, so uh, I lost it. So uh, now nobody actually believes it was one of the best. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, it's easy to say it was one of the best. Yeah. Oh, the stuff I got out of him. He was telling me stories about one. being it's on the set of Serial Mom would blow your socks off. <laughs> well, no, because the first thing I said was I, you know, I was a big fan of his cameo in The Simpsons. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he, plays, he plays in The Simpsons, and one of my favorite lines in there, is Marge is trying to explain to Homer that he's gay. And she goes, no, Homer, you have to understand. He enjoys the company of other men. And Homer goes, well, duh, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> what my all-time favorite lines. All right, we're joined by Mike Sirkin and... Um, Ramsey Moore. Ramsey Moore. Write it down. I have, it is written down. Sorry. I was looking for where it was. <laughs> Ramsey Moore. Are you John Rancher already? <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Let's not... Because that's an interesting thing. You were telling us about... Uh, you were telling us about... These guys are the real potheads of, uh, of comedy, and uh, they have a bunch of stuff they do. They have a web show they do, and uh, Ramsey's got a couple movies. We're going to get to talk about that in a couple oh. seconds. But this is really felt really funny to me because you were telling us about the various ways in the dispensaries they sell pot, oh. and it's not just like you know green leafy. No, no, they, I mean they, they got, got iced teas, they got sodas. sodas. They have tinctures where you could just have a spray. Olive taste. oil. Olive oil. They have uh, fi fish. Oh, those little fish crackers. They have popcorn, they have the candy, they have the lollipops, they have Jolly Ranchers, they have gummy bears, uh, basically anything you I would imagine the gummy bears would be very popular. They are, yeah, they are very popular. Uh, but yeah, anything you can imagine, anything they can put weed in, they will put weed into. It's amazing. Now, barbecue, now, barbecue now, sauce? Is that stuff, is, is that stuff um, can the dogs smell it? 
I, I'm not sure. I haven't tested. They could them. not smell the candies because I've had the dogs smell me, and uh, they had no reaction to candies. Yeah, the candies are great because we'll rip the labels off and put them in our bags. Like, we'll mix it in with other candies. Uh, and you put the word diabetic and they're afraid to touch it. Yeah, so now I hope there's no TSA agents actually listening to this and now keep an eye out for us, too. And Mike Circlin. Mike Circlin. Okay. T-S-I-R-K-L-I-N. We're just using their prejudice and against them. Yeah, they assume so you're diabetic. Well, yeah, no, this guy, they assume he's a terrorist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, but yeah, so I mean, you mix it, and it's great to travel with, and you know, you come, you know, like, and you know, when I go to New York, I don't always, can't always find, you know, weed, you know, so I always, it's great to have some candies around. Yeah, it's good to have a little candy. Yeah. It's good. Hey, kids, what's Uncle Mike's pocket? Oh, boy. Well, yeah, you do have to make sure, with, especially yeah. with young ones around, that you keep them oh, wrapped yeah, up. Oh, yeah, definitely, you know? yeah, no, it's, yeah, you always be safe with that kind of stuff, you know, so. Be responsible. Always be responsible. Now, you have a TV show, or a web show called, uh, RealPodHeads.com? Yeah, it's on the RealPodHeads.com, we, uh, we did a pilot a few years ago. We have Ron Jeremy and Kato, Kato Kalen, Roberto Valderrama, Matt, Matt Eisman. Eisman. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You can find that all on the website. And we've done sketches. Like, we did a Christmas, uh, we did a 420 Carol, where it's a take on, uh, you know, the Christmas Carol. On what if I'd never smoked marijuana? Uh, exactly. Think, that yeah. was the whole theme. <laughs> Your life would have been yeah, much I, worse. It's. Uh, I think it's anybody. I think anybody who watched Cheers and didn't drink and still thought it was funny will find our stuff just as humorous. Like, all right, so I don't smoke weed, but we still. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, good we still. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So we still go for jokes. You know, we still. It's still funny. Funny yeah. is funny. And we still want know? to make our masterpiece at Christmas. It's a wonderful pipe. But yeah. we <laughs> <laughs> now, um, now you you got Ron Jeremy on that. How much did he cost you? Uh, he just cost us every cost bit of food in the house. Everything, yeah, every food in the house. It was a sandwich that we bought him, plus the sa he ate Adam Hunter's salad while he was telling Adam Hunter. And Adam Hunter is very particular about. Now, his I'm sandwich. sure, I'm sure, if you said that on a porn set, uh, on a porn uh, set, that would have a different connotation completely. Yes. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just ate his salad with with uh, lettuce and tomatoes and, and grape jelly. And grape jelly. <laughs> <laughs> he and just eats people's food off their plate? Yeah, oh yeah, just, right in front of you. They call him the hedgehog. He literally, like, <laughs> he, he's a hardworking man, I'll give it to him. He literally came off a porn set. And I, I, oh, I, said literally, I imagine, yeah. I've never done that sort of thing, but I imagine that it's very draining. <laughs> and he's like, and he came and he did a he did a you know guest spot on our pilot. It was cool. He played the harmonica. Yeah, he played the harmonica for us. And he gave us a rolling paper, actually. With yeah. Him. He, had, he has rolling paper with him, a picture of him on it. You know, it's very, him having sex. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be so. That's gonna be a strange moment. It's like, okay, I'm smoking down to the act. And then we're gonna stop right there. All right. Now, also, you were in a movie called The Gamer. I was in a movie called Gamer with Gerard Butler and Ludacris and Amber Valletta, where I uh, I sent Amber Valletta, who's Gerard's wife, out to um, basically be um, you know uh, sexually abused by other people as part of a game where I control somebody and it's in the future so no one has jobs and they have to rent out their soul to a gamer like me who sits in there eating pancakes sending them shirtless. out to be abused shirtless Oh, see that. So you were typecast. Oh, I was typecast. Uh, but can you tell them, tell them about me oh, the star? Oh, here's what happens. Okay, <coughs> Gerard, when he's doing that, he's on about 800 calories a day and about 30 ounces of water because he has to be all ripped up the whole time. So they finally say you're going to meet him and I'm sitting there, and I'm like a, just a, you know, a broke actor. So I go to craft services, and they go, well, we have lobster, we have prime rib, and we have seafood salad. And I go, can I just have everything? And I just surrounded myself with food. And I'm sitting there kind of gluttonously eating, and all of a sudden I hear this person breathing, uh, staring at me. And, he's, and I just look up, and there's Gerard just going, that's a lot of food, mate. And he was so angry that...